going to have to wait here. Because we always have to unlock firearm, unlock your cooler. So, moral of the story, get to the airport early. Because if you don't, you're either going to be, well, you are going to be frustrated, and you might be late for your flight. Well, we'll see what TSA hijacked out of my bag here. Everything I need for a hunt is in this fishy ranch travel boat. And if nothing else, it looks like we can do a podcast. There he is. Holy smokes, here. How are you doing? Great. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. Good to be seen. Yes. Everything went well, I take it, huh? Wasn't an hour like you thought it'd be. Mm -hmm. No. All right, I'm ready to go. We are in southeast Arizona. Jerry had a really good idea that we should burn our deer points, and I think we had more than enough, Jerry. We did. We had uh, eight between the two of us. Yeah, we, we had, uh, yeah, I, we got tagged four and five. Yep. That means we were at the top of the pile. The first couple of days are always as much scouting as they are hunting. Never been here, Jerry's never been here. And try to figure out where the deer are. See what we find. Well, it's opening morning. Jerry and I hiked up this ridge and we can see for miles. This is just like a lot of people who are watching this probably. They draw a tag, they go somewhere. For us, we got five days. Figure it out, sort it out, pack it out is our hope. Today and tomorrow, will be scouting days as much as they'll be hunting days. Gotta love it. Beautiful, huge expanses of public land and supposedly a good number of cows whitetail. You can see how easy it would be for them to just disappear or to never be seen. Fingers crossed with any luck, we'll find some. I've looked at this, this mountain 15 times and all of a sudden there he is. Straight out in front of you? Yeah, he's, it's, she's, uh, I can't tell, I want to say he, I don't know if it's a buck, but he pretty up, he's up pretty high, Randy, out in the sun. He's walking down the hill. It's a buck. He's just to the left. Now he's down in that gully again. Might be two of them there. Now he's behind the rocks again. These are called the gray ghosts for a good reason. Jerry's down there on the 15 by 56s and he saw a deer way up on the hill and it disappeared. And I could not find it in the spotter to save my life. And he stayed on it and then he came up and took the spotter and said, it's right in that group of trees somewhere. Well, as quick as I got my eye back to the spotter, it walked through a little opening. But now I know what cluster of trees is. It's a group of trees only 20 yards wide and I cannot see that thing. I think you're gonna have to find more, Jer, if I'm gonna find one. <laughs> yeah, we gotta, do, we gotta do a little bit better than that, but boy, yeah, it's, uh, it's good glassing conditions though. So I uh, gotta be patient a little bit, but. He's serious. There's nobody I know who will spend more time behind a set of optics than Jerry Pritchard. He will sit there until darkness comes. So every once in a while I engage in conversation to make sure he's awake and not sleeping. Because I don't have the patience he does. I got to get up and walk around and fidget about every 15 minutes or so. That's why he finds more deer than I do. Well, Jer, I'm about ready to go down to the truck, get a sandwich, and that sermon, that lecture we just got from the camera guy about how we're going about it all wrong and what yeah. we should do different. Yeah. I'm gonna, what did you say, cogitate? Was cogitate. that cogitate? Yeah, we gotta cogitate on this a little bit. All right. I'm gonna cogitate on that lecture we just got from Dale, the camera guy. Thing. 
big part of scouting is eliminating where they're not. Yeah. Well, it's late afternoon. We just went on about a two hour drive looking, checking out places and uh, got up here, parked down the hill and walked up this ridge. You can see this humongous basin back here. Seems like there should be some deer in here. No one's been in here. We'll stay here till dark and see what we see. If there's a deer in here, deer will find it. Okay. He just sits there and grids nonstop. He's more than 25. Well, can't find big coos deer bucks, but we found a really nice mule deer buck. He is wide, holy cow. Man, he's wide. I'd shoot that one. The sunset table says we have 20 minutes of daylight left, which usually means the camera guy tells me we've got five minutes of filming <laughs> light left. <laughs> and my, my eyes have about zero minutes left behind these this binoculars today. I do not know what to say. I mean, I mean, we put a lot of optics and a lot of hours across a lot of the landscape, and you shook out that one little buck. Such good-looking country, too. Yeah. I mean, that buck only was—he wasn't even as tall as those fingers, and he was about that big. And he was up there over that ridge. Yeah, we glassed him from that other side. I don't know if that means we're not high enough or he was lone one up high at, I don't know. But tomorrow, we're going on the other side of this, we're going to make about a 40 minute, 40 mile drive from yep. where we are today. It's All discouraging right. to look at that much country, but wherever they're at, they're saying, we just need to wear them out. Well, we're going to be waiting for tomorrow. <laughs> so we got a lot more hours left behind this thing. All right. All right. Thanks for watching, folks. Wish we had something more to show you, but this is what you get today. We've got a layer of frost on the pumpkin this morning. All right, today's the day. Well, the idea this morning was to go to this other spot, get the sun out of our back with some big basins, and we're here right at the perfect time. When you've never been to an area before, it's not like you can walk in in the dark, so you gotta wait till you have a little bit of daylight before you make your, your move. Second day of hunting, we drove up this highway and climbed up on these ridges up above. We have no idea really where to go. We're just picking spots that look good and spots that we think won't have many people. So nothing like pulling off the main highway and climbing up the ridge and getting away from all the normal spots. Habitat looks a lot different. Hopefully we'll see some deer. The deer. Yes, sir. You know, we blame the camera guy for everything around here. But <laughs> I guess when he says, hey, I think I see a deer over there, I'm probably going to have to pay better attention. Well, I had a pretty good theory that he was bad luck right up till about five minutes ago. Yeah. Now, now I got to come up with a like, new theory. Well, why are you guys looking way up there? There's a bunch of deer over yeah, here. He, I think Dale's figuring we're, we're working way too hard at this. Just look out in the boulders, you'll see them out yeah. there. There are two full-grown does there. One's looking back behind. Come on, be a buck. Be a buck with them. I'm not sure, Jerry. I think that what you have is the doe binoculars. <laughs> and that's been probably about right. There's three of them there. Oh, there's a fourth that ran off, so that puts me at 10, just like I predicted. Just like you predicted. <laughs>
<laughs> there we go. Jared predicted 10 here. Let's do this. Let's uh, go all the way up to the end one. Yeah. Do that, and then we'll work our way back this way. If we see a good spot to glass, we can only spend a half hour or so. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'd, I, I mean, mean, what we're... <laughs> The last bunch we saw, something spooked them, and that's all we need, right? Yeah. No, we'll definitely stop in glass in all these spots. One thing I've noticed just looking around, there's a lot of deer droppings here. So yesterday I didn't see crap for crap. Yeah. Well, let's pack up. Load up. Let's load up and do it. All right. Here we go. We're officially going to cry uncle on this one. <laughs> Once you get right there where you can see that dirt, it's ruts about that deep. <laughs> it's a wash. It's not even a road. So, but here's the good part about that. This is virgin country. Uh -huh. Nobody has been hunting it because they all get here or there and they turn around. Well, you could be onto something with no one screwing around in here. So that could be good. That could be good. Let's do it. Let's go kill a deer this afternoon. All right. I just saw it like a white piece in the back behind the trees move and then disappear. So I'm sure it's another deer. Because right now I know it's in, there in the spotting scope. And I'm not seeing, I can't see it right now. I must have looked at that spot a thousand times today before we seen these deer. So now we got to find a way to trick them into coming out of that cover a little bit further if we're going to have a hard time with these. Still no bucks though. I, I think we're nearing 20 deer today and still no bucks today. So good sign though. At least, we, well, at least we've seen some today. So tomorrow will be a better day. You know that first buck you saw yesterday, that little three point? I was like, hmm. Now I just about break an ankle trying to get in position to shoot him after what the first two days have happened. Thanks for watching, folks. I wish we had something to show you that was super exciting. Some stock where we peek right over the edge and the big one looks up at us. Tomorrow's another day. We'll get him tomorrow. All right, you heard it from Jerry Pritchard. Tomorrow's another day. Thanks for watching, folks.